Good morning, church. When we see the events unfolding around us today, we can't help but think that probably this is the tipping point and God's judgment is very close. And probably it is when nations are against nations and it's only getting worse. Can we fight against it? Are God's people in trouble? How long can we be safe? There is sadness and gloom among many people. But Acts 14 verse 16 says, In the generations gone by, God permitted all the nations to go their own way. So nations were created by the will of God. God is sovereign over all nations. God is sovereign means he is in full control. He rules. The nations do not move without his permission and they do not move outside his sovereign plan all nations including our nation then we might say that but there are leaders powerful leaders who can influence they are corrupt ungodly they are against the ways of god against the plan of god where god is in full control proverbs 21 verse 1 says the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the lord he turns it wherever he wishes he's going to influence the king's heart the leader's heart the lord stirred up the spirit of cyrus king of persia who we all know was a secular powerful king in ezra 1 1 psalm 2 verses 2 to 4 says the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed people saying let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us he who sits in the heavens that is god laughs and the lord holds them in disdain so now we might say the bible the same bible also says that satan is the ruler of this world on earth the god of this world the prince of the power of the air cosmic power over this present darkness so isn't it true that satan has the power to create havoc on the earth and influence many things many people including christians and that is true but satan is not sovereign he can create destruction only with god's permission and within god's appointed limits and we know all this and we we need reminders whenever we are down because god is sovereign over his creation and the forces of nature god is sovereign this is a no-brainer because he has created this earth psalm 135 verse 6 reiterates that whatever the lord pleases he does in heaven and in earth and in the seas and in all the deeps jesus said to the wind peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm so god's sovereignty over the nations, over all the rulers and all the satanic power behind behind them. God is sovereign and we understand that and we know it. However, where we struggle most of the time is how practical this is to our daily lives. How does it impact our daily lives? Why is this so important that we are conscious of the sovereignty of God? And that's the question here. His sovereignty matters so much because it extends to the affairs of our daily lives and the plans we make for each day. God is also sovereign over events that from our limited point of view look random, but actually he is having total control on the events as it unfolds. God is sovereign over the disabilities which, we are, which some of us are born. God is sovereign over the suffering of his people. God is sovereign over both life and death. So when a Christian is aware uh, of this attribute of God, his daily life cannot be the same. And we will look at a, an example of Barnabas and Paul in Acts chapter 14, wherein Iconium, Lystra and Derby, which is in present day Turkey, they were persecuted and how they used this persecution as an opportunity. They had four opportunities in the midst of opposition. They saw opportunities. First was the opportunity to speak so in verse 3, it says they spoke, or chapter 14 of Acts, verse 3, they spoke boldly, confidently, and for a long time. So the apostles had experienced the power of God. The apostles had experienced the love of God. And when we can say 
he loved me or if we have tasted how good god is then we have the willingness and the and and the power to speak the truth when we believe the sovereignty of god we look for opportunities to preach god's judgment and the good news that is the gospel to the people to this generation who is so depraved a consciousness of god's sovereignty will give us this holy boldness to to face the world and that is what makes us useful the second opportunity barnabas and paul had and the other apostles also was to do good to others so in in verses 8 to 10 we see paul healed a lame man so we should make it our motto to do all the good as we can to all the people we can and at all the times we can in spite of resistance the opportunity the third opportunity which barnabas and paul had was to correct misapprehension so when when the people saw that uh, they are healing people and paul healed a lame man they started believing that in them as gods so barnabas was called zeus the the greek god and paul as hermes the greek god and they both became greek gods but the apostles tore their clothes and in uh, verses 14 to 17 they made it clear that everything that was good they received it from god so they had this opportunity to correct their misinterpretation and point to god the fourth opportunity was paul used this to prove the sufficiency of god's grace so in verse 19 when paul was stoned and he was dragged out of the city almost uh, supposing that he was dead so paul being stoned was far from being unpleasant he was left for dead however later he used this experience to, to prove what god has done for him he was so dead that he was not even sure whether he was in the body or not some scholar says that the time when he was caught up in paradise which he mentions in second corinthians chapter 12 verses 3 to 4 that probably was the time when he was stoned and he was almost dead so every uh, every bitter thing had some sweetness to it every bad thing ill thing has something good to it and paul always used this as an opportunity in fact he was proud of his scars uh, due to stoning and persecution and how do we know that galatians 6:17 he says i bear on my body the brand mark of jesus the scars became the brand mark of jesus so let us not be disheartened by the events that are unfolding and and evil might look really powerful but as christians we have these four opportunities maybe in varying degree in in a different sequence as case to case but the holy spirit will guide us in specific situation so the first is speaking boldly about the gospel based on our own experience second is doing good to others third is pointing people to god for everything good and fourth is relying completely on god's sovereign grace saving grace these are daily practical realities every christian should live with amen